We are looking at Job chapter 42, the final chapter in this book. Here we see Job in response to God's speech, humbling himself. God rebukes the three friends for adding to Job's suffering by their false assumptions and critical attitudes. And Job's material possessions and his family are restored. And he even receives a greater blessing than he had before. And the lesson here is that those who persist in trusting God will be rewarded. Look at verse 7 and 8. If I could draw your eyes to verse 7 and 8. God makes it clear that Job's friends were wrong. The fact that God is not mentioned, he doesn't mention any specific sins, shows that God confirmed Job's claim to have led a devout and obedient life. Job's friends had made the error of assuming that Job's suffering was caused by him by some great sin. They were judging Job without knowing what he was doing. There's a lesson here as well. We must be careful to avoid making judgments about a person because God may be working in ways we know nothing about. And as we near the end of Book of Job, the main question is timely. It's timely for me. It's timely for many of you. It's also an age-old question. Why do believers experience troubles and sufferings? Through a long debate, Job's supposedly wise friends were unable to answer the question. Job's friends made a serious error for which God rebuked them. They assumed that trouble comes only because people sin. People make the same mistake today when they assert that sickness or a lack of material blessing is a sign of unconfessed sin or lack of faith. Though normally, but not always, following God leads to a happier life. And let me be clear, rebelling against God normally, but not always, leads to an unhappy life. The thing to remember is that God is in control. In our world, invaded by sin, calamity, and suffering may come to good and bad alike. This does not mean that God is indifferent, uncaring, or unjust, or powerless to protect us. Bad things happen because we live in a fallen world where both believers and unbelievers are hit with the tragic consequences of sin. God allows evil for a time, even though he often turns it around for good, as you can read in Romans 8, 28. We may have answers. We, have, we, we may have no answers as to why God allows evil, but we can be sure he is all-powerful, and knows what he is doing. The next time you face trials, the next time you face dilemmas, see them as opportunities to turn to God for strength. You will find a God who desires to show his love and compassion to you. If you can trust him in pain, if you can trust him in confusion, if you can trust him in loneliness, you will win the victory and eliminate doubt, which is one of Satan's greatest attempts to have a foothold in your life. Make God your foundation and know you can never be separated from his love. Peace be with you, friends.